A really cool feature of Photoshop CC is the new Puppet Warp tool. You'll actually find it in CC but not in the previous versions and it's found up in the edit menu and down here under content aware scale you'll find Puppet Warp. Now what I've done here, it's a very quick composite, it's not really working for me but for the purposes of showing you Puppet Warp this will actually work. So I've cut the camel out and I'll show you here is my mask. Uh, so I've cut the camel out and I've placed the camel in this scene. I've also added some foliage and if you're interested in how I did that, go and view my previous tutorial on cutting out hair and wool because I show you, I use the same method. I duplicated the layer of the background. I actually placed it here and moved it up a little bit so that we've got a bit more of the foliage there and I used a tree, a little miniature tree brush to paint back on top of the camel the foliage. So that's a really cool trick. But go to my hair and fur uh, tutorial and you'll find out more about that. So back to this one. Now that I've cut out the camel, as you can see, I can simply go up to edit and go down to puppet walk. And amazingly, it basically does a mesh over my camel. Now what I then want to do is choose my points, points that I want to see stay and points that I want to be able to move it much like you would a puppet. So I would like to play a little bit with the head here. Uh, when I photographed this camel, he was bending down a lot and I didn't really get the angle that I wanted. So I will first lock the camel off by putting a point here near the neck. I want to lock the back section off, the middle section. I really don't want the rest moving, so I add some points around the body here to lock this area off. I will also lock the knee. I find if you add points near the joints, it actually helps to realistically warp the animal or the person that you're working with. I'll lock off another point here and now this leaves my head. Now I probably want to move this part of the camel and this part of the camel. So now I've got all my points in place that I think I'll work with. I choose this point so I click on it and what happens is I can move this camel really any direction I want which is really really cool. I'll undo that. I might even take this point away by pressing delete and just show you because I've locked the rest of the camel off I can make him do whatever I want there with his head. Now of course if you go really crazy it's going to look a little bit weird but the flexibility of what you can do here is amazing so I'm going to have the shot now with the camel looking up like that. I may also move the back leg back a little bit more just to give him a bit more presence. I've added a point there just to straighten up the limb. Um, you know, you can do really anything, but you know, you don't want to go too far because it will start to look a little unreal. But here we are, I'm just adding little points and moving my camel around how I want it. Now, once I've got it to the point that I think, yep, I'm happy with that. I can apply the mask. Yes, I want to apply the puppet warp. There we go, we've got a camel now in a totally different position. Now if I zoom up, the one thing you will notice is the areas that have moved with that puppet warp can be affected a little bit with the, um, with the mask. But leaving a little room around the edges, a very quick easy cut out and then refining your camel afterwards or refining your animal afterwards. Because I've gone about it the other way and I'd already done all the refinement, what happens is when you apply the mask, it basically gives you a new mask. It applies the cut out on the previous mask so you lose it, you can't edit it anymore and you basically are left with with this, okay? So what you wanna do is to do a softer, wider mask first so that you're not left with these jaggedy edges and you can actually paint them out later. 
So you can see we've got some jaggedy edges there. It's still easy enough to tidy up like this, but you do lose some information. So if you're planning to puppet warp, I strongly recommend doing a basic cutout. So I'm going to show you that now. I'll turn this one off. I'm going to turn this camel back on. So this is a duplicate copy of what I had before. Okay, so here we have the original camel. We are going to duplicate this again. That is because once we've applied the puppet warp, we can't go back again, as you could see before. I'll turn off that bottom one. Now we've got this one on. Okay, checking the mask is there. Now I know that I am going to move the camel down here and up here. So what I want to do is allow for that. You don't want to bring in too much because otherwise it won't warp the way that you want it because it's picking up the points all around now. But if we just allow a little bit, then when I warp the head, I can then go back and tidy up the mask. Okay, so going back to puppet warp and locking our puppet off. So I'm for this one, I'm not going to move any of the back end here. I'm just going to lock it off by adding my points so it doesn't move. And the only part that I want to play with is the neck. So again, I'm going to have it so it's craning up, looking up like that. And I'll apply that. Yes. All right, so now you can see our original mask has gone and there's a new mask there that allows us to tidy up around the edges. So we do that, just getting rid of that excess. Now I'm using a soft edge brush here and if you press shift, put the first point down, press shift, next point it actually draws a straight line. So it's a really quick way of cutting out around relatively simple edges. So shift, 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 and then paint out around here. So the beauty is it's just around the head that we need to fix up. And the rest of our camel has already been cut out beautifully using some of those methods that I talked to you about in the other tutorial so which you can find on my website it's how to cut out hair grass fur and it'll give you some really good tips on cutting out around really complex areas okay so just finishing off around here as you get used to the using the Wacom tablet and um, drawing around it becomes quite therapeutic just uh, using the pen on the tablet and sort of painting it back in. Now here there's some hair that we need to worry about so I will show you quickly that trick of using particular brushes. So we'll do a, a basic cut out around here, we'll leave the hair there. Shift, shift, shift we just needs to be rounded off again so press X Okay, make the brush a little bigger and cutting in here getting rid of that so using the soft edge brush works around the camel's head quite nicely it's even probably a little bit too soft here so I often just make the brush a little smaller and tidy it up as you make a soft edge brush smaller the softness is less so you can also adjust your hardness up here very easily. Okay, so now we've got this hair. I've got a, another hairbrush that I've created, which is my hair in fact, and I use the Adobe Brush app, which is on my phone, to create this brush. So I'll make a few adjustments to this, this brush here. I don't want any angle jitter and I don't want any scattering. I do want some spacing and 
I first of all want to cut back so I'm going to direct the brush this way so that the hair direction is going the way that I want. Okay I'm cutting in here and I'll make the brush smaller and cutting in here as well. It's not looking too bad around the ear there. But I want to bring some back. See I've taken too much of the hair away. So what I will then do is turn it around, press X and paint in where I want it. And that brings the hair back. So that's a very cool way of cutting around hair. So zooming back. Now we have a camel that has his head up in the air. Now I didn't capture it like that, but we can change it. We can use the puppet warp tool. Original camel, like that. New camel, like that. So puppet warp is fantastic. I encourage you to play with it. Enjoy. <laughs>